In the early 20th century, the concept of incretins was taking shape. Scientists realized the intestines may secrete hormones that cause insulin release and regulate blood sugar levels, but their nature and functions remained a mystery. In the early 1980s, Professor Joel Hobbiner at Harvard Medical School, when cloning the pre-proglucagon gene from anglerfish, found it contained another peptide sequence. Which was a very much of a mystery and a surprise, and it was, a, a, it was not glucagon, but it was very close to glucagon, but uh, we, we called it a glucagon-related peptide. Later, he cloned this highly conserved gene from mammals and discovered glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1. Its role was identified by Professor Svetlana Moizov, head of Peptide Synthesis Core Facility at Mass General Hospital. When she saw the 37 amino acid sequence of GLP-1, she saw the sixth as a possible cleavage site. If one is to cleave that arginine residues, there will be a uh there will be a shorter peptide at 30 amino acids, which I called 7 to 37. And I predicted that that's going to be the active sequence. She later proved her hypothesis and synthesized GLP-1 7 to 37. In 1986 and 87, Moizov and Hobbiner published two major papers demonstrating that truncated GLP-1 7 to 37 is bioactive in inducing insulin release and is an incretin. At about the same time, Professor Jens Jul Holst at the University of Copenhagen also identified GLP-1. Holst found that after GI surgery, patients' insulin rose while blood sugar dropped, attributing it to incretins. We purified the real peptide from the body of people and people, hmm? humans, and uh, purified it and put it on the pancreas and it worked. And, we, it shared, so, and it turned out to be the same peptide, of course. The three scientists together confirmed that GLP-1 7-37 had great potential for diabetes treatment, but the problem was GLP-1's short half-life. After more collaboration in R&D, a GLP-1 receptor agonist was developed. Such agonists were also found to aid in weight loss, sparking a revolution in treating diabetes and obesity. Man, you know, addressing the glucose, but you're also modulating weight loss, energy utilization, appetite, gastric emptying and a number of different things. So for the first time, we have something that has multiple effects that modify the disease process. Since GLP-1 receptors are present in several organs, the drugs may be applicable to cardiovascular diseases and cancer as well. The future of GLP-1-based therapeutics is bright. The biomedical contributions of these three scientists are truly far-reaching.